Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to the review. This is another paid request, this time from Rapid Kirby 3K. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, video game playthroughs, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Paparazzi, a 2004 film starring Cole Hauser. You have Dennis Farina, Robin, what was her name? Robin Tunney, Tom Sizemore, I think Daniel Baldwin. You have cameos from people like Chris Rock, Bill Gibson, Matt McConaughey, Vince Vaughn. This is a film I've seen quite a while ago for the first time. Probably around when it came out first on DVD. Because I like the premise. The premise is you have this up and coming action star, Bo Laramie, played by Cole Hauser, who's been in Pitch Black. And he was in the Too Fast, Too Furious movie. He's been in a couple other stuff. He's with his wife, Robin Tunney, who is in End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger <coughs> and their kid. And the paparazzi, they like taking pictures, especially Tom Sizemore, who's very, very aggressive. Kowalzer goes up and says, hey, do you not take pictures of my kid? Oh, okay, you know what, I apologize, but then he keeps doing it. Kowalzer is much more forceful. Hey, can you please stop? They've been taking pictures of them when they're naked on the beach and like all this other stuff, invading their privacy. Ultimately, Tom Sizemore gets... Cole Hauser to punch him, thus able to capture it on film from his other goons, and then they don't get punished, but Cole Hauser gets punished and put into anger management. It gets worse when the family goes out and they're in their vehicle and the paparazzi are chasing them in their cars, kind of a recreation of the, of the Princess Diana event that led to her crash. So they have a crash. Him and his wife get hurt, but his boy gets in a coma. And these paparazzi won't stop, but Kohlhauser want to make things even, so to speak. So it's a revenge film where you have this action star go up against the paparazzi. Like I said, an interesting premise. Because the paparazzi, especially at this time, you know, I would see documentaries on these guys and they see a lot of them seem like scumbags complete scumbags that anything for the bottom dollar and determine the villains seem like an easy feat <laughs> and it's one of those things where no Gibson produced the film I kind of wish he directed it and starred in it. Now, McGray, if he starred in it or if he directed it, he probably would have been accused of being pretentious or being pompous or, oh, yeah, you want to go kill the photographers and how dare you and all this other stuff. So this guy, Paul Abastel, I don't know what else this guy has done. He really didn't bring much as a director. And sadly, they took a premise... And thankfully it's 80 some minutes long. And I would say it's harmless where it's it didn't make me angry or anything. At best, it's a time waster. But I think it could have been a lot more. And it comes off as kind of forgettable. Not even kind of. It comes off as forgettable. It becomes a forgettable movie. Because you have a revenge film where I like Cole Hauser... I don't know if he was the right guy for the lead role. Like someone like Mel Gibson, I think, could have brought even more intensity to the situation. And as much as like Cole Hauser, I don't know if he works in a leading man role. Like he works well in Pitch Black and other movies where he's the supporting character. I just I don't know if he's great best as the leading guy. But, I mean, I don't hate him. I see these cameras from these other guys. I'm like, you know what? Vince Vaughn would have been interesting. That would have been an interesting choice. Uh, Matthew McConaughey would have been an interesting choice. I did Mel Gibson himself. I did, but... 
And also, it's a revenge film, but it's PG-13. When it's PG-13, it just comes off as tame. And the revenge elements do come off as tame. And you say that, well, he's doing his revenge in a way to be, quote, more realistic. So he doesn't get caught. But at the same time, no one's going to look at this film and say it's realistic either. They're still going to say it's escapism or ridiculous for a variety of reasons. So you might as well go for broke. And then let in the ridiculousness and just go over the top with it. But And because of it, it it's very routine. It's a very routine by the numbers movie that you kind of see where everything is going. And there's not really anything in here that's memorable enough that's going to stick with you, you know, days after watching the film. So whether it be okay, his, him as a rising star, and then them taking pictures, or of course they don't like it. Flashing photos, the car gets hit, the photographers take the pictures. You have this detective, Dennis Farina, great actor, may rest in peace. Trying to like do his impression of Columbo, where he's like having people assume he's not that smart, but he's actually able to figure stuff out. Great to see him in there, getting a good actor. And said, well, they called 9-1 and they waited. And I'm like, yeah, and they took pictures too, but I guess you could chalk it up. Chalked it up to it's their job to do it. Tom Sizemore is the head villain. And may he rest in peace. I do like him as an actor. From The Relic. Among many other movies. Saving Private Ryan. And he definitely. I would say of the actors. He's the one that kind of. Almost knows what movie he's in. Because he's saying lines like. He's looking at a picture of Cole Hauser. Or, and he's like. I'm going to destroy your life. I'm going to eat your soul. I'm going to enjoy doing it. <laughs> it just he, he that's hell of a line. And I, like Tom Sizemore kind of knows with the acting, it's a bit over the top, but kind of the thing that should fit in this type of picture. The certain cadence to his talking. Listen, you will do what I say now. Not quite William Shatner, but some other way. And again, the revenge elements, there's four guys, there's about four guys, four photographers, including Tom Sizemore. One guy's on a bike, which swerves off the road by accident because Cole Hauser's out here waiting for someone in his car, pulls out, the guy from the bike was following him, wasn't paying attention, goes off the cliff, Cole Hauser tries to help, and this guy is so smart, he's giving him crap. Even though he's hanging off the side of a cliff. Listen, if I was hanging off the side of a cliff, and there's a guy trying to reach for me, a guy that I know I caused his car crash and got his boy in a coma, I'm not going to be talking smack to him. Just really stupid. But hey, I mean, I guess they really have, they did that, so when he doesn't pull him up, it's like, yep, there's a good reason. Bye, see you later, Bill and Ted. Dumbass. Really stupid to threaten a guy that could pull you up when you also help call as that caused the crash. But again, it's really, really to beat into submission that these are bad guys. And they have these cameos that just come out of nowhere, and I guess it made sense because. Co-housers in Hollywood, so you should see Hollywood stars. But like I said, Vince Vaughn is in one scene uh, fairly early in the film, which he's worked on a film that Cole Houser's working on. And that's before the car crash and everything. That's when they're just taking pictures of them, him and his wife on the beach naked and stuff for one of those tabloid papers. Mel Gibson has no dialogue. It's just he's also waiting in anger management. And sees Cole Hauser walk off. Chris Rock in the weirdest one where 
he doesn't even get to play himself. He's playing a pizza delivery guy. And I'm like, wow, so everybody else gets to play themselves, but Chris Rock can't even play himself? He's playing just a pizza delivery guy? Oh, well, I'm not famous enough to play myself, unlike Mel and Matt McConaughey, which is later on. It's like, well, I gotta play a different character, okay? So he's a pizza delivery guy. Which he's there because Kohlhauser called him so that when he's not looking, Kohlhauser sneaks into his trunk and he can get out of his house. Because at that point he has police protection. So he could go over and take care of one of the other photographer guys. And like I said, the revenge, it being PG-13, like I said, you could argue that it's a guy trying to use more of his wits and not so much his fists or gunplay and such. And that's the thing, there's not much action. Like, the trailer makes it seem like there's a lot of action in this film. It's really not. I mean, if you're expecting something like taped in or, or something, you're going to be very disappointed. Because it's that much. You say it's maybe trying to be a thriller, but there's that much suspense. So that's the thing, it's like they had an idea, but it's like they didn't know where to go with it. The spoilers. The second guy he kills is pretty much the guy stopped on Kohlhauser's set when he wasn't worked looking. He put what a, a prop gun into the guy's car. So when the guy leaves, Kohlhauser follows and makes a fake phone call saying, hey, hey, the, the cops, uh, this guy has a gun and blah, blah, blah. He's waving it around in his car. This is his license plate. So cops come with the, and the guy's like, what's going on? Sure, I'll get my stuff. Now granted, what if the guy didn't put his arm into the car what if he was just arrested and then it'd be a prop gun and be, you know, it might not have worked out that way that he had wanted, but the guy was stupid enough to reach in when cops have guns on them. And then do you think you'd be able to feel what a gun is? And then he pulls it out. What's this? And then he gets shot. And then the cops say he died by uh, death, uh, suicide by cop. I uh, seem like with the way that worked out, a lot of things could have happened differently. I did what the guy's like, okay, 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 gets on the ground, hand behind his head, or something else to that effect. Oh well. Also, I know this is a stupid question. Uh, the guy gets a disposable phone, and I've never used a disposable phone. Do disposable phones actually say disposable? disposable phones in big letters because at one point this Farina tells them hey be careful using your phone because they could pick up on it but I'm just curious if if you get a disposable phone will it say in big letters disposable phone I don't, know, I don't know if they would really, like I said, and this is like on the phone. I'm not talking about like a packaging. This is like on the phone, it, it seemed like. So I thought that was kind of weird. Maybe it is. Again, I never used one. If you did, you let me know. If not, it'd be like, wow, in case they are too stupid, this is a disposable phone because it says it right on the fucking thing. So there's only two left. There's Daniel Baldwin. He's the guy that was in John Carpenter's Vampires with James Woods. And then there's Tom Sizemore. And Daniel Baldwin, the two of them go into Cole Hauser's house to put up cameras. Robert Tunney sees it. One of them tries to attack her, but then they have to leave. Cole Hauser's even more pissed. That's when they get police protection. Because they didn't notice that they were putting cameras up. Cole Hauser... Getting calls pizza 
delivery. Chris Rock comes by, chats with him for a bit, sneaks into his trunk of his car, visits Daniel Baldwin, has a baseball bat, and it cuts away. It cuts away, and then the next time you see Daniel Baldwin, he's dead on the ground. Blood coming out of his head. I'm saying that, that's what I mean is you want to see like action fighting what this guy can do as an action star you don't really get much of that so if you're going for exploitation you're not really getting that because it's very tame the higher ups the hoi polloi's the pretentious people they would snub their nose at the concept of the film I don't know, it's just that you look at a variety of other revenge movies. Even if you like Dick Carter from 2000, which people gave, a, you know, gave crap to, that's so much more going for it compared to this. Where, you know, Stallone's trying to get revenge for the death of his brother. What does this really offer people? And the rest of the spoilers, uh, Cole Hauser frames Tom Sizemore. The cops come to his place. They see, or at least Daniel Baldwin's place, I should say. They see the computer that has all of Cole Hauser's house under surveillance. While they're there, luckily enough, they're able to see on the computer screen that Tom Osborne's there with a gun. Thank God they were there at that right moment to see that. So Tom Sizemore goes in, and you think, okay, it's going to be this cab mouse chase, or it's going to be suspenseful, or it's going to be an action scene. Really, Tom Sizemore enters the room, and immediately Kohlhauser beats the hell out of him. Kits him, gives him like three, four punches, calls the cop, oh my god, thank god you guys are here. He's right here. And then they arrest Tom Sizemore. Like, like anticlimactic. It comes off as like fairly anticlimactic. As he beats Tom Sizemore easily, he's arrested. Things work out for Cole Hauser. He's going to premiere. His, his boy gets out of a coma. He's with his wife. They're going to his premiere to, for another film. Matthew McConaughey is there just to say hi. I see a lot of these cameos, for the most part, seem very pointless. Except by guess Chris Rock, but he doesn't even get to play himself, which is kind of an insult. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Even if this lame music at the end of the film, even the rest of the score is... I dare everyone to remember anything about the music in this, but the music at the end being very lame. And this is a film that, if this was released today, it would not get in the theaters. It would go to streaming. Absolutely. And this guy in the theaters, it didn't make a whole lot of money. Which I can't really blame it because it's not really that memorable of a film. It's a forgettable movie. It's one of those you watch and it's like, okay, I, I like Cole Hauser as an actor. I don't know if he's the best guy for the lead role, though. This is very routine, very by the numbers. Not much action. Not much of anything in suspense. I think the ending's kind of anticlimactic. Tom Sizemore being evil. Not bad thing to see because he did a good job with that. But again, I still wish like Mel Gibson, instead of just direct and star in the movie. Or you direct and get Matthew McConaughey to star. Make it R-rated. Go for bro. Screw what the critics say. The critics were never going to like this film regardless. So might as well just go full tilt. And this film is stuck in first year. Didn't go into second or third year. Stuck in that. It just. I think that was a detriment. I don't know why you would do this plot. And stick to PG-13. And. I don't know. Go full Death Wish. Go for. <laughs> go Death Wish 3 on it. Why not. But. At least that would have been memorable. At least it would have been trashy fun. At the end of the day. It just wasn't that much fun of a movie to watch. It's just nothing so egregious that makes me bad is other than I think it's a premise that was wasted. 
it's a decent premise that was wasted. So that's just me though. But that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.